Hi, so this is just going to be a four-part review of comma rules, punctuation rules. So I am doing this because I noticed in the uh, thick description papers that I have read thus far, uh, frequent issues with commas, when not to use them, when use them. Um, so I'm just going to go over this uh, in four parts for you really quickly. And so the idea is I'm going to be talking to you today about the four main uses of commas. Now, commas are used in probably a hundred different ways, you know, for, for dates, for addresses, lots of different things. Uh, but these are the four ways in which they come up the most frequently in your writing. And so I just want to make sure that you know about the rules for those. So number one, the number one use in no particular order is that commas are for separating independent clauses before a coordinating conjunction. So when I say coordinating conjunction, uh, so this is not uh, what I grew up knowing, but some people like this. They say fanboys. And you may have seen this in school. So fanboys is an acronym that represents all the coordinating conjunctions. The little short words, two or three letters, that link things together. So that stands for for, and, nor, but, or, yet, so. The job of these little words is to work as connector tools. What these little words do not do ever is start sentences, unless we are speaking just colloquially, unless we're being informal. But in a paper, you will never start a sentence with any of these because these are coordinating conjunctions. So you will see me mark that on your essays. So separating independent clauses. So what is an independent clause if it's been a while since you've covered that? Um, an independent versus a dependent clause, think of it as an independent man versus a dependent man. Uh, if you are dependent, you are not able to stand on your own and you have to use a walker to get around. And God forbid if somebody were to yank that walker away, then you would not be able to stand on your own and you would fall down. That's what a dependent clause is. It's something that is meant to be attached to an independent clause, be attached to a sentence. And if you try to do a dependent clause just standing on its own, you're gonna get the little mark where I say fragment. Um, if you are starting something, I'll just go ahead and tell you these things, with as, since, before, because, or although, and if you want more, you can just look up lists of subordinating conjunctions, that's what those are. The purpose of words like that is to start dependent clauses or subordinating clauses. And so if you try to just do a sentence that's like, uh, because I didn't like ice cream, period. I'm gonna mark that as a fragment because that's supposed to go with another bigger sentence. It's not supposed to stand by itself. But anyway, coordinating conjunctions, one of their big jobs is to take two independent clauses and or three and link them together. And an independent clause means it is a sentence, it can stand on its own, and what makes it an independent clause is pretty simple. It's just that it has a subject and a predicate. And I'm sure you covered this in baby school, but the subject is what the sentence is about and the predicate is the action or what the subject is doing. So for instance, we actually have two independent clauses in this sentence, which makes it a compound sentence, but you don't have to know that. So I decided to make all the example sentences for today's lesson about TV shows. So, Henry Cavill was already familiar with The Witcher through playing the video games. That's, actually, you know what, I think this is probably a compound complex sentence. But anyway, um, there you go, that's one independent clause right there. The subject is Henry Cavill. We love Henry Cavill in this house. We stand Henry Cavill in this house. But anyway, he is the subject, and the predicate's pretty simple, was. Then, we moving on and we have a new sentence. Now you might think that since he, the pronoun, still refers to Henry, as I often do, that it's not a new independent clause. Uh, but that's not true. We have 
a new subject here, even if it's referring to the same person, saying he, that pronoun still counts as a new subject. So we've got he really worked hard pursuing the role of Geralt of Rivia. Worked is the predicate there. So he worked. Uh, Henry Cavill was and he worked. So in the middle, we have this, and this is our coordinating conjunction, just so. And in the South, we love to start sentences with so, because it's probably a Scots-Irish holdover. Um, I do it myself constantly, as you have noticed from watching these videos. But we can't do it in writing. But this is its job. So what this needs is, and I've marked this on a lot of your, hi, what's the matter? Come here. Somebody wants to be in the video. Come here. He's a good boy. Nope. Okay. He was just like, what are you doing? That was my dog. Um, so we need a comma here because we've got a new independent clause and we've already got the conjunction and we just need the comma here to separate it. That looks like a G. Let's just make that a little bit less ornate, shall we? Okay. Comma to separate the new independent clause. So I see this a lot and people just, they just have the two independent clauses and a lot of times they do have the conjunction they just don't have the comma. So here's another one. Uh, Game of Thrones was probably HBO's most successful. Oh my gosh. Grammar. I have a master's degree. Okay. Game of Thrones was probably HBO's most successful show, but it also had one of the worst endings of all time. And this is just facts. All right, so Game of Thrones is our first subject. Was is our predicate. And then again, even though this pronoun refers to Game of Thrones because we've said, but it, it starts a new independent clause. It's a new subject. So it had. So our coordinated conjunction here is but, and we've got everything else in place. We just need that comma. So you put the comma here before the coordinated conjunction. So again, just think of it. You've already got two complete sentences. You're putting them together with the, with the comma and the coordinated conjunction. Uh, for the last one, Amazon Prime's The Boys has a character named Homelander whose powers are similar to Superman, and The Deep is similar to Aquaman. So we've got two independent clauses here. Uh, the subject of the first one is it's not Amazon Prime, it's The Boys. So The Boys is the name of the TV show. The second season recently came out. Some of you may watch that. The Boys has, and then it switches to the subject being The Deep, who's probably in a twisted way the funniest character on there. And The Deep is. So we've got an and for our coordinating conjunction. And again, we just need a comma there to separate. Now, another thing that you can do uh, is use a semicolon. So another problem that I often see is this. Just this right here. Oh, beautiful. Great handwriting. Amazing. All right. Uh, Game of Thrones was probably HBO's most successful show. It also had one of the worst endings of all time. When you take two or more independent clauses and you just mush them together without the proper punctuation, that is what we call a run-on. So I see this pretty frequently. And so there's just a couple ways to fix that. You can do what we've done over here, which is the comma and the conjunction, or you can use a semicolon. A semicolon, which is what my, some of my students refer to as the dot and the comma, is a punctuation mark, yeah, I'll just use this, that is able to link independent clauses without a coordinating conjunction. So if you ever have a semicolon here, you, come here. You want to say hi? Come say hi, come. Tony, come. He's just like ghosting. He's just like standing outside the door, but he won't come. What do you need? What do you want? Anyway, um, the whole purpose of this thing is to separate independent clauses without any conjunction. So if you put like a so or something after that, that's wrong and I'll mark that wrong. That does not need to be there. The semicolon is strong enough to do that by itself. Now, another problem that I see is a very specific type of run on uh, that looks like this. 
Henry Cavill was already familiar with The Witcher through playing the video games. He really worked hard pursuing the role of Geralt of Rivia. The comma is not strong enough on its own to hold those two independent clauses together. It is like Stretch Armstrong in those things, but it, he is worn out. He is exhausted by that. He needs help. So that is what we call a comma splice. And you're going to probably see that me marking stuff, comma splice on your papers. So a comma splice is a specific type of run-on where you just have the comma, but you don't have the coordinating conjunction. Again, one way to fix this is just to make it a semicolon. The semicolon is strong enough to hold those two together by itself. That would work. Or you can just add the conjunction. Um, so all that being said, that is the first job of the commas, is to, with a coordinated conjunction, put two or more independent clauses together. So now I'm going to go into part two.